Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of the UGA Sports.com All Things Georgia call in show. My man Andy Stowe mm-hmm. up in the top right with me, coughing away. And we've got Eddie from Ackworth also in here. That's a sickly crew tonight, folks. We're going to try to get you through it. Eddie was having a sneezing fit before the show. So uh, we'll try to get you through it as best we can. We've got our uh, topics for tonight, guys. Top three impact freshman players on Georgia's or transfer or tra- oh. Paul, you're muted. Paul, you he might be having some issues. Or transfers. We're thinking we're thinking freshmen or transfers. So. Okay, excluding, then, excluding. Yeah, yeah, excluding ETN because we can't pick him. We can't pick him. Well, because we'll we all will. About, because we all will. Right. 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 Yeah. Right. We'll also talk about who we think uh, could potentially replace McClendon wide receivers coach heading to Tampa Bay. We'll talk about that. Uh, the Braves, who we think might be the MVP for the Braves this year, excluding again, another excluding from Eddie Mattingly, excluding Acuna because we would all pick him as well. A little bit about UGA baseball, a big series win, 10 runs in three different games. First time it's happened since 2004. Thanks to Dave McStats for that info. And then we'll also touch on Oh, boy. We'll touch on the UGA basketball program a little bit and uh, see what's going on there. So, guys, we appreciate you joining us. Before we get started, though, Andy, how was your Valentine's Day? Well, damn, I didn't. I'm sorry. I didn't. I'm sorry. Go to Andy on that one. I was at home by myself. So go to Andy on that one. That was bad. That was was, was on me. That was on me. How was your Valentine's Day with the the wife and the new kids and all? I mean, you really want to know? Yeah. How was it? I ordered some edible arrangements three days prior to get delivered to Nicole's work with a custom card. They did not answer the phone, did not get delivered. I went to the one near my house. They also, uh, they're, they're a private franchisee. They don't, they don't communicate. So uh, okay. it was great. It was great. It really was, Andy. Yeah, it was a that, great That's run. called an epic fail. Is it was an epic called. fail. Yeah. yeah so it was. Like yours was about the same as mine. So yeah, it, it was. And it I, was. Did work. I didn't have to put any work in at all to do all that. So good job. So. Yeah. Guys, if you're watching us, make sure you're letting us know where you're watching us from. It, it makes the show go by a ton uh, faster and, and better. If you put in your comments as well, we'll put them up on the screen and uh, we'll, we'll just chit chat. So, uh, you know, we ran through our topics and as always, you guys will lead the show right in the comment section. You'll let us know what you want to talk about. Uh, we've got Jackson Barber already on here from the old X, the old Elon machine says uh, thoughts on Mike White. I'm tired of losing in basketball. John Radford said, Braves, we have 10 months to decide. Interesting. And then our man Beyond Creative says, happy Sunday to us. Appreciate that. Happy Sunday to you, Beyond Creative. Glad you're here with us. All right, guys, let's jump into it. That was three minutes of an intro. We did a great job. (laughs) We're talking about impact freshmen or transfers, excluding ETN, top three. Since I am the host, I'm picking first. I'm going Nasir Johnson. Guys, if you haven't looked up Nasir Johnson and who this kid is, I think he is Oh, this is tough, right? Defensive tackle. So the the thought process, he's from Dublin, Georgia. Mm-hmm. Thought process here is you want to compare him to those great defensive tackles that have come through Georgia yeah. recently. That's unfair to Nasir Johnson, okay? That's, that's unfair to him. I will say, though, I think he is going to be uh, – he's going to be an impact player, I, I believe. Now, freshman year, that's tough because we haven't even gone through spring practice yet to see where these guys are really stacking up. I will say that's my first pick, and I, I think it's a good one. I, I really hey, do. Can I ask Johnson. you a question about it, Paul? So I, I'm not disputing your pick. I just have a question. So, And I know Kirby rotates guys in, so that's completely fair, right? So he's probably going to see the field. But he's literally listed on what I'm looking at as fourth on the depth chart. Warren Brinson, Jordan Hall, Jordan Thomas, and then him. So you really think okay. he's going to have that much of an impact? Yeah. Who's making this depth chart right now? Well, I'm just saying as it stands right now, right? Okay. I mean, yeah. and that'll change. I understand. I would also I would also like to argue with you, Eddie, that we did this before last season, and my impact freshman was the impact freshman. So, you know, just just Re- refresh my memory. Who was it? I, I really oh, the kicker. The kicker. kicker. Yeah. 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 Okay. And you guys laughed at me then. So just I, didn't. I was with you on that. I was I was with you on that pick. So uh Andy, since you didn't rebuttal against my pick, I'll let you go next. Okay, well, I'm kind of going low hanging fruit here, but I, I mean, you have Ellis Robinson going because you got to think yeah. about it. Oh, there you go, there you go, James Caraway. Ellis Robinson, Kamari Laster is gone, and now he's going to be fighting Julian Humphrey and Daniel Harris for playing mm-hmm. time. And I just mm-hmm. think if he, you know, they, they're throwing out names like Champ Bailey with this guy. If you are 
throwing Champ Bailey out there, who I think is the best player I've ever seen in college. Yeah. If you're throwing a guy out there, I like it. So to me, he's low hanging fruit, but I think he's going to be playing. I think he'll be playing early and often. Yeah, he. Uh, there's not many guys that have had as much hype as him. Yeah, coming yeah. into this, like to the point where any he's also top three on almost every recruiting service mm -hmm. that rarely happens for a corner because to kind of refresh everybody's memory, what rivals is doing, you know, we're, we're associated with rivals. You've also got the other ones as well. What they're trying to do with their five stars guys is they're trying to project and it's kind of weird, right? But they try to project first round picks in the NFL draft. Yeah. So that's what they're doing They're If they're saying this kid is, is the second overall player, then they are predicting by way of doing that, saying that he should be the second round, second pick overall in, in his draft. So that's where they're thinking Ellis Robinson. I mean, top three is, is crazy for a, a defensive back, especially yeah. a corner. Uh, you just don't see it very often. And from everything I've heard about the kid, uh, hard worker, keeps his head down, like no trouble. There's everything you want, right? Right, yeah. right. Yeah. So, I mean – Great pick, Andy. I left that one right. I, I left I it out. hanging fruit. It definitely. Right. I, went, I went a little deeper. I dove deeper, but you took yeah. it. You know, somebody was going to take them, right? Yeah. We can take the same guys as well. You know, we're not out here yeah, yeah. trying to pick nine, but that's a great pick. Great pick. Yeah, I think. Sure. He's, he's and not pick. not to mention that, but I mean, the highlights we're seeing, he's making George Pickens like catches oh, yeah. on the yeah. defensive side of the football. I mean, yeah. just incredible athlete. So I, I love that pick, Andy. It's great. Yeah. What you got, old EFA? I'm going to start with the low-hanging fruit, as Andy likes to call it as well. Now, I'm going to go with K.J. Bolden. I think this kid is a massive yeah. gift for Georgia. Um, I think we got the better of the guys from Buford. I know Jake Pope's coming in. I understand. But uh, K.J. Bolden may be the best athlete in the country coming to Georgia next year. And he's going to get on the field. Uh, he's going to make impact plays. You think and they make it a little bit. I mean, he's listed now, obviously, behind Malachi Starks, right? But they're going to find a way for to get this kid on the field somehow. Here's a here's a question for you guys, and, and this is all – this is such a hypothetical, right? Because we just – I mean, we don't know yet. This is just for fun right now. Uh, we're in the we're in the dog days of the winter, and, and we're, <laughs> we're, you know, we're, we're pulling along as best we can. The fun thing is, though, is to kind of project these guys. Who do you think sees the field first? Ellis Robinson or KJ Bolden? Ellis Robinson. Yeah, I, yeah. I kind of agree with that. I think Ellis Robinson. I think Ellis Robinson. Robinson may start game one. That's that, you know, that's a crazy take, but it's not that crazy. It's not like that it's, crazy. It's not crazy. And walk us, walk us through that thought process, Andy. You can't well, just say that. He's coming in, he's going up against guys that have are not starters yet. He's not like he's coming in to go up against uh, Kamari Lasseter. Kamari Lasseter is gone. He's coming into a spot that's wide open. Not to mention, you have a new DB's coach. So you don't have somebody that's there that's got this preconceived notion of who started last year and who's moving up. He's coming Very into true. an empty slate, and if that guy – I've seen his clips like y'all were talking about. If he is as good as they say he is and his clips look, he may be playing day one. So. Not to mention going into the spring – he's already yeah. done this once – who knows if Julian Humphrey's even here when we start in the fall? We may, we may say, whoa, this guy's pretty good. I'm out of here for real this time. What, for the, for, what would that be? The first time. That'd be at least the third. I mean, for real. Like, he, yeah. he's like gone, you know? Yeah. So I think that, I think Andy's right on that. Absolutely. But with that being said, uh, uh, when you're talking about KJ Bolden, he's going up against Dan Jackson and Ja'Cory um, Thomas. And those guys, nothing against them. They're not Javon Bullard. So who knows? Right. I mean, he may be right there at it, too. Uh, so we've had some guys in the chat, and I want to put this up now that it's my turn again. You guys can't steal them. Uh, we've got a lot of Justin Williams yeah. in the chat. Yeah. Okay. We've got Justin Williams, Justin Williams. Uh, we've also got Don't Sleep on DeMello. DeMello oh, Jones. Mm. Next DeMello time. Jones. Hey, Fred says, good seeing you guys. We appreciate it, Fred. Chris Taylor also liked your pick. What's up, CT? Uh, Justin Williams again. We see him. Demelo Jones again. So there's some names out here we we haven't touched on yet. Uh, man, as much as I oh boy, okay, this is this is tough, guys. Because as much as I really really like Justin Williams, I just don't see wh where does he get on the field. That's the problem. I think he's too yeah. far behind. Yeah, yeah. Small Raylan Wilson and Tony Bowles listed now ahead of him. I mean, I'm I'm just. Troy, 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 Troy Bowles. Yeah, but, yeah. Troy Bowles. I'm sorry. 
They're good. Yeah, I just I don't think he's I don't I don't think he's going to beat those guys out. I think they're just way ahead of him. We got C.J. Allen, Jalen Walker, yeah, mm-hmm. Kyle, mm-hmm. Raylan Wilson. I mean, there's four yeah. guys right yeah. there. There. Yeah. I mean, and, and and Troy, and Troy Bowles looked good in his limited playing time that we saw. Right. So that's the only concern I have with Justin Williams. If if there was like free roam for a freshman to start and every position was open, I think that Justin Williams would have a good shot at it. That's right. the only stop I have with him. So with that being said, I'm not going with him. I'm not going to Mella Jones. You guys can go with both of those. I mean, where's my list at? I think I lost my list, boys. This, I'm in trouble. Well done. Well prepared. Yeah, I've lost my list. Yeah, that's great. Hey, Andy, go ahead with your next one. I've lost my list. This okay. is good. Well, my next one wasn't going to be KJ Bolden, but I'm going to skip over him. And my next guy is going to be London Humphreys because mm. – he is, Ooh, you went so okay. So you went you went transfer side. I went transfer because six foot two, two hundred pounds, runs a four four one forty, and he broke Jalen Ramsey's four um, two hundred meter record. Uh, I think he is going to be that guy that can just run down the field. He's not going to be the new lad. I know everybody wants to compare those guys. He's, He's not, right. He's and that's right. the only, that's the only thing that's kind of the same, really. Because <laughs> a lad's yeah. more fifty guy and. um but, yeah, no, I think London Humphreys is going to come in. He's going to help stretch that field. You know, maybe we didn't have that guy last year that could stretch it. So, I like London Humphreys. I'm glad you left this for me because I was going to go with him third, but I'll, I'll take him second because I'm afraid where Eddie's going here. Colby Young. Yeah. Damn it. All right. 6'5", All right. 215, the last are kid. Are you picking him? Is that your pick, yeah. Paul? Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. The, the, the last yeah. kid that Georgia got from Miami that had 10 touchdowns in his career. And that was around 6'5", 215, Lawrence Cager. Lawrence Cager is great. Bald in Athens. I think this kid, who's the last, remind me, please, enlighten me. Last 6'5 kid for Georgia that, you know, just balled out. Rock Bowers. Okay, so tight end. Yeah. Tight end. I also like, guys, I also like Colby Young for the reason that he started off, I mean, he, he's from New York. Went JUCO, he's he's like made himself. He's uh, he's he's different. He's he's absolutely different. And I watch this film and I'm like, man, this guy can go and high point a ball, you know, and and just go into a, an end zone like George Pickens, like Lawrence Cager, uh, Javon Wims, like those guys. It kind of reminds me of them. And uh, a lot of those guys were transfers. So yeah. I think I think uh, Colby Young, as much as London Humphreys and I like London Humphreys. Don't get me wrong. I think he got maybe overly hyped in the portal process. If that makes sense. Um, I like Colby young. He, he's under the radar. Nobody's talking about him. If you're going to the water cooler, nobody's talking about Colby young. They're talking about, they're talking about Humphreys. Cause he was the one that was, that was hyped up so much. Colby yep. young's under the, under the radar. Doesn't have to worry too much you know, and come in and just dominate. I like, I like that. The, I like my only, that. the reason I went Humphreys is because of the speed, the straight line speed. Yeah. Sure. Um, Colby, Colby Young's a four or six and a half type guy four or four or seven. So I like, I, we haven't had a stretch the field type guy. And I but think. Who, who are you going to put in the uh, corner of the end zone when you need a, when yeah, you need yeah. a ball? Exactly. For sure. No, I'm with you. On that. Yeah, but yeah, I'm with you on that. But for the home run, I, I won't, we, we haven't had a home run guy in the last couple of years. So, you know, and, and love rah rah to death. He, couple injuries though yeah. you know so colby could step in there and and it's not like it's georgia locks it down with three wide receivers and that's all they play yeah. the whole game they yeah. rotate them you know like crazy so they sure. he'll see the field uh, uh very much so eddie what you got well i mean you took mine I, mine was colby young as well but oh, I'll, good pick. I'll, take good pick. It, I'll take it one step further that's your marcus rosamy jack saint replacement that's Ooh. what that is. And i like that I by like the that. way he had 47 receptions, 563 yards, and five TDs with a garbage quarterback in Miami. And that's better than your London Humphreys pick. It is. Actually, Andy, it's a lot better. Um, and he's listed second on the depth chart right now. I know these depth charts don't mean anything right now, but that's a that's a chance to play right there. I like his size, his his ability to use his body to get open and that kind of thing. And you're right. High point in the ball right there at the end zone. Give it to that guy. I, I love Colby Young. Right. Yeah. I'm, I'm a, I'm a big fan of his didn't know much about him during the season, you know? Uh, but he's one of those guys that 
coaching staff looked in on. Obviously, he's, he's putting up numbers. Eddie just read them to you. He's not. And he can he can block downfield. That's the other thing. Like Marcus Rosemi Jackson. That's why they loved and why I loved him. One of my favorite players. He yeah. he just laid his body on the line. And Kobe Young does that. Ken from Cummings says you're all overlooking the one player that. Uh, will be a player, and it's ETN. So at the beginning of the show, we we all said we're I mean, not going to choose ETN. He's into the whiskey already. It's it's <laughs> obvious. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we uh, we would choose ETN. Chris Taylor's uh, talking about Lad and and London Humphreys. Exciting whites. That picture of the the wines in the grocery store. I love that. Um, <laughs> Andy, go ahead, my friend. I'll let you go again. Well, I had KJ Bolden. I mean, KJ. I mean, again, low hanging fruit. KJ yeah. Bolden, the guy. He's like I said, he he could be starting day one. We don't know. He may be. Man, so you really, you really went chalk as hell on your picks, didn't I you? Did. We I, when Eddie said wow. when Eddie said impact freshman or transfers, I was like, okay, who's got potential to start this year? And mm. to me, there's only well, two I, that could start. I mean, I, I get it. I mean, those yeah. were two on my radar too. But I was trying to go a little deeper, much like Paul. But it's it's hard not to overlook those guys. Those guys are going to be the impact players, right? Yeah, the, I mean, they are the two freshmen that could be starting day one. Yeah. Are there any? Or is there any other freshman that could start day one? I mean, I'm looking at the list, and I don't see one. I mean, unless you have unless you have injuries, you know, maybe a halfback yeah. ETN goes yeah. down, you know. But outside of if everyone's healthy. They're the only two that can start. I think, I think, I think, gentlemen, I'm about to steal Eddie's third pick too. I think because I, I looked at the way he looked down at his paper when you said running back, Nate Frazier. Is that your nope. pick? Nope. Damn. I'm pick. I really okay. Reason for Nate Frazier, right? That's gonna be tough. I, you got to explain. Okay. okay. I'm, I'm jumping. Let me. Let yeah. me go. Let me go. Let me cook. How many times last year did Georgia go to its third string running back, fourth string running back? A good bit. I a mean, yeah. there's a lot of times that Cash Jones was in there. Okay. <laughs> and Nate Frazier, man, they, they love this kid. Okay. Mm -hmm. ETN is going to be the primary back, but there's always a secondary back. And then you go, okay, well, what about Branson Robinson? Sure. Sure. But we, we don't, don't know. know. We don't know. Yeah. Okay. And there's no clear cut. There's, there's no way to know uh, with him. Andrew Paul. I like him. I like him too. I like him. Uh, and then Rod Rob is – he's like a, a a hammer out there. Dude, yeah. just massive. Nate Frazier brings a different aspect than any of those guys. Like, so you pair him up. I think he starts to see more playing time. And I'm not saying at the beginning, oh, man, this is a – Big Hoss just came in with one. We But we're, we're missing out on here. We're missing out. Big Hoss did. He said McLeod, Xavier McLeod. That yep. uh, transfer from South Carolina. And then Eurosec, I think that's how you pronounce his name. Man, can you look that up for me, Andy? Eurosec? Can we, okay. get a, can we help the fans out with the correct? Yeah, a correct, correct, if I could even say correct. That's right. You said it correctly. That's correct. Yeah? Is it yeah. Eurosec? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, you know, both of those guys. Eurosec, his production Eurosec. is Stanford. Again, yeah. though, McLeod, I, I looked at McLeod and I he jumped out at me too. But you got Jamal Jarrett, Kristen Miller, and Stackhouse. Yeah. You know, There's a long way to go. And that's yeah, the same thing we do. It's a long He's way to go. It. And again, I know he rotates guys in, but that, that's that's a lot to overcome right there. But I, I'm not arguing it, Big Hoss, but I see what you're saying. No, I, I you're, like your sex kind of kind of that same way too. You know, he, he, oh, you're a sec. When we were talking about this, I was like, he's the guy. But then I was like, well, God, he's got a long way to go to get to yeah. that. I don't I think he does. I don't think he does. I think, think so? I think he's top two. I think he's top two tight end. You think he's you ahead think of Jay Nodell? Yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. You think he's ahead of Pierce Sterling? Yeah. Wow. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be interesting. Okay. Yeah. Well, they they're brought not him bringing him this kid to sit. They brought yeah. him in for a reason, you know? Yeah. They're not bringing him in to sit. He's yeah. He's going to be out there playing. He's yeah. gonna be out there playing. That's a damn good pick. We mm -hmm. we looked over we we yeah. lost over him. Uh damn. You still have a chance to make up for that, Eddie. You do have the last pick here. Uh you could pick your sec and really I mean you probably could save your ass a good bit because he's gonna see the field a good bit. I'm what am I in last place? I mean no, I mean, I'm just no, I'm just giving you I'm just giving you insider info here. Oh, like okay. we all Thanks, skipped Paul. over it. You could look really good by picking him, but I think you're going somewhere else. I'm not going him. Sorry. But it has been mentioned, I will say. I'm going DeMello Jones. And the reason the, the reason I'm going – Paul, will you just relax and let me explain this, okay? Yeah. Did you do you the same thing with my Nate Frazier picks. I don't want to hear it. I, you, you know, you, no, you I have some it. questions. I didn't make a face and, and almost vomit like you just did. <laughs> All right, fair, fair. 
Fair. What you got? <clears throat> Did you watch the state championship with Swainsboro? Baller. Baller. Absolutely dominated the game in a losing effort, but dominated the game. And here's where I think he makes an impact. Punt returns. I think they're going to put him back there, and he's going to make an immediate impact because we need somebody like that. I know Evans did that great punt return against Alabama. That's all we saw. DeMello Jones can return punts, okay? And he is a fantastic kid at doing that. I think he sees a feel like that. Plus, I love his name, DeMello. I mean, that's just great. <laughs> yeah, that fantastic is, that is a name. Uh, John helped me out here. Marlon Brown. Marlon Brown, Marlon yeah. Brown another uh, big wide receiver. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this is tough. This is from John. He says, I have a question for Eddie. Who was the first to transfer out after spring? That's tough. I don't know. I mean, it, holy cow. Let's let's wait till spring on that, John, and let's let's start getting some intel. For why me? Why why me? <laughs> yeah. Well, Eddie, you might have mentioned him earlier. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Julian. Yeah. Yeah. He he could be. Yeah. yeah. Four times the charm. So I mean, Garrett Key's in the house. What's up, Garrett? Good to see you, brother. Good to see you. I think all those are solid picks. I think Urasek is probably one that we all overlook, though, and we're going to look back on it and, and say he probably should have been whew, maybe one first or second overall pick. I, really do. I asked you guys on the text, and you kind of shot back at me, Paul, <clears throat> about why they brought him in. Do you, do you think they brought him in because they think Delp is not the guy? Or, no, I don't. I don't. I don't think. I don't think that's the case. But once you get past Delp. You got Once Lucky, you Pierce up. Sperlin, you know, lost. You got Lucky. some younger guys. Lucky's yeah. been injured. We don't really right. know what we have in him, right? Right. So you, you've got a, you've got a younger you've got a younger tight end room. So kind of bringing a veteran presence. Uh, and he's you know obviously has to be some sort of smart coming from Stanford. You yeah. know, so bringing yeah. a, an elder, if you will, into the into the into the mix. Georgia lost a lot of tight ends, guys. You yeah. know, in the past couple of years, they had a, a lot a lot of transfers. They lost Arnell Washington. They lost, lost Brock Bowers. They've been lower on that number than they've wanted to be. So this isn't this isn't anything crazy that they brought him in. They they wanted to get to that. I think it's what is it six five six. They wanted to get up uh, one that's scholarship. Six. Yeah, six. on those tight ends. So uh, you know that's 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 what you do. Uh, let's see. What was the next topic, guys? What were we going on? Well, we're talking about the Georgia football team. Why don't we talk about that coach that just left and who we're going right. to Right. Thank you, Andy. Thank you, Andy. Yeah. That came out of uh, a left field, if you will. Yeah. Brian McClendon going to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Same position, right, Andy? Yeah, he, he's the passing game coordinator, and he's the wide receivers coach. Let's what does that even mean? Position. What is that? <laughs> I think – I don't know. We can Google it, but I, I think it's basically setting up the – that's gotta like like that's gotta just be a title, and I don't know it coach. And I might need to ask Coach Don in this. That has to be a title that just gets you more money, Eddie. Like passing game coordinator, passing game coordinator, yeah. and running game coordinator, and then yeah. you have the offensive coordinator. Because what are you sit, all sitting in a, a room together, and the offensive coordinator is sitting there, and he goes, "All right, uh, B Mac, can you can you give me some passing plays, please?" Yeah. Let me coordinate okay. these passing plays for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like, and then, oh, hey, Mr. Run Game Coordinator, can you give me the run games as well, the the, the run plays as well? <laughs> oh, okay, I'll, I'll merge both of those together and I'll make my – no, I think it's just a – you know, I could be yeah. totally wrong on that, but I well, think it's just – I a also think game. this is part of what we're seeing in college football, and this is going to happen more and more and more. The NFL gives you breaks. You have time off. You have time to spend with your family. You're not on the road recruiting. You're not dealing with a transfer portal. You're not dealing with NIL. All this shit on top of everything they've already been doing, they've already been grinding, right? And I just think this is the beginning of the end for some of these coaches that they're going to look to the NFL. And even if it's a lot, I would say some of them, this is a lateral move. Some of them take a move underneath what they're doing now in college to get to the NFL and have that time to just decompress that they don't get in college football. It's it's become ridiculous. It really my has. first my first thought was I wonder if B Mac called up his old buddy Thomas Brown. Yeah. He was like, man, how do you like coaching in the NFL? Yeah. And Thomas yeah. was like, Man, it's a little different. Yeah. It's a little different up here. Great you point. Know? Yeah. Um, because the BMAC for me, like, I feel like he's, he's close to that next stepping. Like he could be that next OC. We talk about next year in the NFL. Yeah. Right. Thomas Brown got it. You know, he's, mm -hmm. he's an OC now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I think 
that's the trajectory I see for, for Brian McClendon is, is very much the same as Thomas Brown and no, no uh, knock on him, right? Better family life. He's got a family. He's got kids. Like if, if that's what it is, that's what it is, you know, and, and you're not going to some terrible town. You're going to Tampa. Great right. weather. You know, you're, you're, uh, you've got, you've got Mike Evans down there. So if you, you're boost gonna Baker, his, he's going to have Baker, right? Right. Yeah. You boost Evans production a little bit. Uh, next thing you know, hey, the OCs are starting to come around. And then after you're an OC for a couple of years, hey, young up and coming head coach candidate. Like, you know, I, I could see that, that path for, for BMAC. I really could. And, you know, congrats to him for doing it. The big question, though, is there's now a spot open on Georgia's coaching staff. They've got some in house options, they've got some former dogs. They've everybody has their opinion on the wide receivers coach. Now, the one name that has been passed around more than probably anybody, yeah. how long is this name? I don't even have to say the name, guys. How long has this name been passed around as potentially every time there's a wide receivers coach opening? Past 10 mm-hmm. years? Since Rick was, was, Rick, yeah, it was, absolutely, yeah. yes. Yes. It was when Rick was still yes. present yeah. in Georgia. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We're talking about Heinz Ward, okay? And correct me if I'm wrong, what has what is Heinz Ward done? Andy in his coaching career. Um, he got fired from the XFL, right? Didn't okay. You? All right. So, but he's worked for the Steelers. I mean, he's okay. done some stuff with the Steelers. It's not like he hasn't coached. He has, and he's currently, but that was a the knock on him, right? That was the knock. There was no yeah. coaching experience. I think that was right. what, with Kirby. Yeah, so that he's was got cool. it now. I mean, he's got some coaching experience in the NFL and, and currently he's a free agent. He's sitting out there. The other name is Terrence Edwards. Okay. But he just um, he just that's got the, the head coaching job. And he just that's exactly right. He just got the, the position of what Mount Vernon, isn't that right? Oh, yeah. the head coaching job. Now that's all high school experience that Terrence Edwards has got. I mean, I, how do you argue against Heinz Ward coming in and just any coaching role at University of Georgia? I, I just I just think that's huge. He's one of my all-time favorite Georgia Bulldogs. Absolutely. I love that guy. When when we beat Florida in 97, you know, that Heinz Ward package, you know, he was quarterback and halfback and wide receiver. He did it all. So James right. uh, says, do high school kids even know who Heinz Ward is? I think so. I don't think so. Why yeah. does that matter? Do high school kids know who Mike Bobo is? I mean, no. I mean, they don't I mean I think he's talking about like his playing career. I think, I think, yeah. You look up Heinz Ward, you'll know who he is. Um, there's a, here's a question and here's another name that's been thrown around. Chris Taylor says anyone like, or strongly dislike Joe Cox, why or why not? Um, Any opinion on that? I mean, I think if he got hired, it would be fine. I don't think it would be terrible. Again, I think it's ultimately going to be for Georgia to go out and get the next level wide receivers. I think they're going to have to start paying more at that position, but I mean, I would be fine with Joe Cox. I don't strongly dislike or like him though. I mean, I'm like, uh, whatever. So if I'm if I'm correct, Joe Cox just took a job with Alabama. With Alabama, yeah, right. He's, he's uh, three weeks ago, maybe. So yeah, I mean, he's as he what? Probably, what? What is he there at Alabama? Tight ends coach. Tight ends coach. Uh, okay, mm-hmm. but he was with Bobo uh, twice. Mm-hmm. Uh, Colorado State, and you know, he's another guy. You know, same age as uh, I think he's the same age as Thomas Brown and, and McClendon. McClendon might be a little older. Um, that's kind of making his way up the rankings. Yeah. Joe Cox, nobody nobody liked him when he was a quarterback at Georgia, but I've seen he's he's able to recruit, and it looks like he's able to coach, obviously, yeah. if you're able to get a job at, at Alabama. We've got John waiting in the background. Let's get John in here real quick. Big John, what's up, man? Hey, what's up, John? What's up? Hey, I put it in the chat. Jimmy Smith, former Cedar Grove High School head coach that's in Arkansas. Dude can recruit. He knows the Atlanta area. <laughs> I think his personality is very, very much in tune with what Brian McClendon had as far as making a relationship with these elite wide receivers. And he turned a Cedar Grove program into a juggernaut. Yeah. Now, is he, is he still at uh, Arkansas? At I, think. I think he is, yeah. I, so if you guys don't know who Jimmy Smith is, like John just said, he put Cedar Grove on the map. I'm talking – he was pushing kids out of their left, right, front, center. Uh, and then he – I think – oh, man, I'm going to be wrong on this. I think he took a job at Georgia State. They went to Georgia State. Right. And now – and then Pittman obviously knew him from the from the recruiting ranks. And 
uh, snagged him to go over with him to uh, to Arkansas. Hell of a coach. So that mm-hmm. Georgia has their picks here. Um, Let me throw a name that I read earlier that okay. all on the forums. James Coley. Yeah, I yeah. know. I, I saw that too. I don't, rather have him than James. I don't understand that one. Yeah, I, I kind of agree with you. I, I'd rather have Joe Cox. I, you I, just, want you, I, I just got PT. Why? why? James Coley. Uh, but he's not going to be calling your plays. He, he would, He's an excellent recruiter. He's, yeah. he's by far the out of out of every name we've just named here, Andy, by he's far the best recruiter of any of those we just named. I mean, it's not out of the brain. I, I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be shocked with that. And would you be upset? I don't, I mean, I'm like, oh, okay, I'd be fine now, with it. Paul, let me ask you a question because you're closer to the program than we are. Kirby Smart, he plans for everything. He's got a plan already for this, right? I mean, he he he's already thought in his mind, if Brian McClendon leaves, here's what I'm doing, right? Don't you think? Sure, or is this sure. yeah. just caught him I mean, off guard and he's got to find somebody? No, no, it's, no. I'm sure Kirby probably for, for every coach yeah. is like, if he were to leave, this is who I would this call. This is the guy, yeah. And then that, that probably changes periodically, you know, as, as he gets new information on these guys. So right. I'm sure, yeah, he's got a short list for for every position coach, every offensive coordinator, defensive, every coordinator. He's got a short list. Yeah. So th- this isn't this didn't catch him off guard. No. Um, it's going to be interesting to see who they bring in because for wide receiver coach, and correct me if I'm wrong here, Andy, you're the stats guy. Most of the time, and John, you can correct me if I'm wrong too. Most of the time, that wide receivers coach is a is a recruiter first. I mean, yeah. He can he can coach obviously, but like his main attraction is is his ability to recruit. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And right. I think I think that's why you could see James Coley coming back just because of that. I mean, and it's possible. Yeah, because he can. I mean, I think it's going to be ultimately about how good of a recruiter they are. So, hey, yeah. Question, if you don't mind, while I'm on here. Yeah, cool. man. Uh, how how what's it really going to change? take to change uh the uh, schedule as it is now as far as the 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 yearly schedule of college football is it going to be a major coach jump into the nfl is it i mean nick saban's gone is it going to be a kirby smart or a i mean jim harbaugh did it and i, I harbaugh wants to go back because he wants to win the super bowl i get that but you can't tell me i mean how long ago was it where the NFL was the grind and college football was the, I mean, is it, is it, is it Kirby smart? Is Kirby smart the linchpin to get it changed? I mean, obviously there's other factors, but I mean, I don't know if, I don't know if Kirby's the the one because you, you kind of just said it yourself. Saban retired and Harbaugh left two of the top five coaches in the game and nothing has changed, right? There's been really no talk of anything changing since both of them have stepped away. Uh, from from the NCAA. So now I think what you'll get, John, to answer that question is you're going to get Saban, obviously, on college game day, and they're going to ask him, you know, like the grind of the schedule and things like that. That might be where you start getting some more uh, conversation around this, if you will. Right now, it's it's, you know, for the most part, it's it's they're not doing a ton right now. So the conversation wouldn't pop up at this moment. But you get into the season and you, you have, you know, say, like I said, saving on game day. Pat McAfee or, or Kirk Herbstreet, somebody's going to ask him a question about the grind of the season schedule. And that's maybe where that conversation takes place. But I don't I don't know how you change it right now. You, maybe you limit the transfer portals and, and the amount of times that it's open and closed and things of that nature. But I, I don't know if, if there's a direct correlation to like if Kirby, Kirby was to leave because we just saw Saban and Harbaugh both jump. And nothing changed. From yeah, that. it's not going to trigger anything. No. Yeah, no. just it's just crazy. And we're talking about, and again, who knows who's going to? We're talking about people leaving, like Julian Humphrey could potentially be at his third, what third school? Yeah, by the fall. No, Julian Humphrey's been at Georgia. No, Julie, yeah, he's been at Georgia. Yeah. Who am I talking about? Um, the name's mistaking me, and maybe I'm, maybe I'm, I'm. Th- There's somebody on our roster that's transferred twice already. No. Or am I completely off base? I'm sure there I'm, is. I just can't think of him off the Georgia's top. roster? Yeah. He's um, already transferred twice? So he transferred in, to Georgia or from? To, uh, I'm completely off base then, if what I was trying to think, or it's escaped me. But I think that my question to Eddie was, who's leaving? It's going to be Pierce. What I, I mean, it's, in the tight end room, Pierce Sperling? 
yeah, we're not going yeah. three deep on a tight end unless there's an injury, God forbid. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, like you know, but it's I think it's just a little too early to to speculate who's going. Yeah, I mean, yeah. he could have a, a hell of a spring, you know. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. So like that's where just to you know be fair to the kids. I'm mm-hmm. I'm not projecting anybody until we get to the spring and start hearing because they could just jump off the page. You know, yeah. we could we could see him again and, and Pierce Sperling's, you know, grown six inches. He's seven two when he's two hundred eighty <laughs> pounds. You know, and I'm like, whoa, there he is. He's not going anywhere. Yeah. Um, but I, I think I think John, to answer your question a little bit, I think changes are coming after next year. We're gonna we're gonna see this twelve game playoff for the first time next year, right? And 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 I think part of that change is gonna be they're gonna realize these championship games, SEC championship you know, big 12 championship, those games are meaningless and stupid. And they're going to do, they're going to realize, yes, I heard the other day, well, they make tons of money. Well, people who gives a crap about the sec championship now, right? You, you want to Georgia really would be in a better position sitting at home, not playing in that game, going in as like a seven seed and playing and a, home a home game, game. or a yeah. five, game, a five seed, whatever playing a home game. Cause so that's going to change right there. Until, so, until so you think the you think the championship games are going away? I do absolutely. I, 100%. I, I think, oh, I think they're, they're, going okay. they're going away. They're they're going away, Andy. I really firmly believe that. And I don't the think money, so. They keep talking about the money. The money is going to decrease because people are not going to go to these games anymore because they're meaningless. Okay, great. We got the SEC championship. If you got a ten and three LSU that beats a twelve and zero Alabama. Yeah, that means something because LSU wins, they're going to get in. Okay, that means something. But that's going to be a rarity. That's not going to happen that often. And secondly, John, the other part of your question, I think un- until football breaks away from the NCAA, they, they develop their own league, they have a commissioner and all that stuff, that's when it changes. And until then, it's going to be a mess. But we've got to have some rules in place. we got to have somebody who says, this is how we got to do things, right? And we're not there yet. Another thing, and I know you got another thing to throw a wrench in it. What's going to stop somebody? Let's just, and I don't know the money. Let's just say it's two million. What's going to stop somebody from like Caleb Downs, who's a surefire top five pick after this year, to say, you know what, I got a bag of money from Ohio State. I'm going to take off this next eight months. And I'm just going to train and not risk injury, and I'm not going to play. Nothing. Nothing. So that's what's going to end up. That could, and then it's kind of like how the bowl games were. Ten years ago, everybody played the bowl game. It didn't matter yep. if it was the Gator or the national championship. And now look where we're at. It's yep. going to take one of those players. that's like I'm, I got money. I'm fine. I'm going to sit and rest six, eight months and have have one less season under my um off my body. You think every NFL team is going to be salivating over that? Yep. You know that's a, it too. It's going to slip my mind. Maybe uh, Garrett Key or James or. Jermaine or beyond, or even Andy can help me out with this. There was a basketball player maybe five years ago that decided, Hey, I'm not going to college. And he sat out at a year. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember who it was, but his, his draft stock tanked. Like he was a top five pick, but then it, it, he did not do anything. Like he trained, like you said, John, and it's a little different with football, right? You've had two seasons. Yeah, It's totally different with, with that, but I can't remember who it was. Uh, his his draft stock tanked. He was a top five prospect, and he's like, "Nope, I'm not going to college. I'm just going to sit out and maybe go play overseas." Is what he did, I and he just never, yeah, he never amounted to any. I wonder who that was. Um, but John, I appreciate you calling in as always, my friend. Take care of uh, Kieran for Forrest, brother. All right, man. See you. Hey, hey Paul, can you uh, man, put, I can't uh, think of who that was. Can you put Garrett Key's question up? He was asking about Brandon Streeter. Um, Brandon Schreier was a quarterback for, for Clemson and he was their offensive coordinator. Um, and so he got fired. He's been an analyst here at Georgia for the past, well, last year. Um, last year. was it, yeah, because we're opening up with Clemson this year. So it was almost like Kirby's playing some of that 4D chess, but yeah, so he is, he was the OC there and he got fired, um, from Clemson, but yeah, he played ball there and he, he coached running backs and quarterbacks, well, quarterbacks in the OC there. So, um, Makes, I mean, it makes a lot of sense to promote him, to promote from within because, I mean, and especially he was an OC. So that's. Yeah. No, he's, a, he's, a, I mean, Kirby has his pick here for sure. It's the, the litter is not uh, dry. You're not getting the run of the litter, if you will, uh, with this uh, wide receiver selection. as the So coach. going back to what you said, Paul, I want to, I want to pick on this a little bit. Do you think the recruiting aspect outweighs the coaching aspect for this position? 
At certain positions, yeah. I no, do. at this one. At wide receiver, yeah, I do. Yeah, you do? Yeah. So yeah. that's more important than actually coaching the wide receivers and the passing coordinating bullshit. You make it. You make it sound like. Uh, you make it sound like he's only going to recruit and not coach at all. No, 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 that's not what I mean. I'm just saying the importance. That it's more important to be a big recruiter as opposed to the wide receiver coach. Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. 100%. Yeah, because okay. because if you're able to go recruit, uh, you know, Evan Stewart or. Uh, just name the name of five Marvin stars. Harrison, Marvin Harrison Jr. Yeah. That guy yeah, would go, be the best player. On the field. Those guys, right? If I those, he would be the best wide receiver on the field. You right. telling me Heinz Ward can't go sit in that Marvin Harrison's room and 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 say? I'm not to telling him, you he can't. I'm not telling you he can't. No, I'm sure. I'm sure, he probably could, but we haven't seen it. You know, we haven't. Yeah, we haven't. It fair. hasn't been. Yeah. We haven't yeah. seen that. So yeah, he could be the best recruiter of all time, but we haven't seen it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so like if you're if you're going through positions, um, wide receiver for sure. I, I so like if you're because they're still going to coach, right? So it's not like we're saying that this guy is just bringing him to campus and then they're not going to coach him. They can still coach ball. Okay, wide receiver is one. Um, offensive right. line, uh, offensive line, you need to coach first and yes. then recruit. I, I believe because it's hard to find uh, offensive linemen in high school and truly fine if they're a boom or a bust. So you have to be able to coach them up once they get on campus. Um, quarterback, it's a little bit of both. Uh, I think you could you could go either way with that. So that's Running really back, interesting. What you're saying is it differs by position, right? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. 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 It flip-flops. I never really thought about that. That's interesting. Yeah. Todd Gurley, again, I could have been coaching Todd Gurley. He was going to be the best player in college football. Yeah. I mean, no, so. Andy, you could not have coached Todd Gurley. So yeah. I want you say – let him play that guy. Yeah. You can hand him the ball. I mean, that's not good. That's it. Hey, I, if I got him on campus, that was all I needed to do. <laughs> you know, no, so that's, like that's, that's really interesting, though, Paul. I've never really yeah. thought about that by position by position. It's recruiting over the coaching, and then it reverses when, yeah, that's 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 kind of interesting. Yeah. No, I, I think I think definitely there's certain positions you want a, a, a lead recruiter and a coaching mm -hmm. as a secondary, and some you want coaching as a lead and recruiting as a secondary. So I think it, I think it just all depends. We've got old James Caraway here, guys. We'll bring him in. What's up, James? In the garage. What's up, right? Man? No baby. Yeah. No, wife's got the baby. All right. How you doing, James? I'm good. Uh, I wanted to touch on kind of what was just said. I was listening to. You know, Jim Donnelly is always with Roddy. And he said, you know, for your coaches, you want a OC and QB coach who can coach at DC. And then really you want recruiters as the main thing. And because the head coach is really going to, you know, be coaching everybody up. But, you know, he's a big time coach. And he said, you know, that's kind of the general thinking and O line coach as well. But, you know, you're looking for recruiters more than, you know, they're all can coach, but right. the job is recruiting. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think, um, and it, and it kind of differs, right? Like, uh, for Georgia, they've taken this approach on the offensive line. Sam Pittman was a recruiter, right? Yeah. That man brought in studs, you know, and, and, and now they've kind of taken this approach of where, don't get me wrong. Stacey Searles has brought in some guys too. Monroe Freeling's nothing to laugh at. He's, he's oh, a good, yeah. he's a good player. Um, yeah. but I think he's more of a coach than, than he is a recruiter, you know? So it just, it just varies. And I think you look at that, your staff by year by year basis and say, all right, how many guys do we know can go out there and, and help recruit this position, but we know he's a bang up coach. You know, that's, that's where I was getting at. With, with all that being said, James, who would you like to see come in as a wide yeah. receiver slash passing coordinator guy? <laughs> really? I don't care. Um, whoever Kirby brings in is going to oh, be. Come on. That, that's, that's ridiculous. Give me, give, give so, us. So, answer. so, so tomorrow Kirby announces, Eddie from Ackworth is the new wide receivers coach. You're like, man, I've got all the, I've got all the faith. I've got all the faith in old Kirby. I didn't know man, Eddie hire. Did like that. Um, <laughs> Hell of a recruiter. The guy's, the guy's an ace of a recruiter. Damn hey, right. He knows everyone around the state of Georgia. He talks to everyone. So he right. knows who has the inside. So well, yeah, we're just going to sit. Georgia, we're, we're gonna, I think Terrence Edwards, um, he coaches yeah. all the big time uh, receivers. The thing is we're never going to get, the top five-star guy because we don't pay for that. We pay for big boys. Um, so, I mean, you can bring Jerry Rice in there. He's Unless Jerry Rice is going to bring that money with him to the recruits, <laughs> it's not going to happen. So Georgia works within the margins. You know, develop a lad McConkey. You get your pick-ins here and there. Um, your A.D. Mitchell. So, you know, 
target those 150 to 300 top recruits and the receivers and and that's where they work so if you're if, but here's the thing though james if you're targeting those guys you gotta you, you gotta be able to you gotta be able to coach a little bit you're going. yeah that's a really good point paul you well, gotta be able to coach. terrence coaches all these guys before they get to college. He does. That's what they he does. yeah because the further you get down the, the more the you prospect board, the more you got to develop, you yeah, know. Yeah. So very good point. Um, yeah, that's true. Yeah. You know, so like that D-Mac got a bad rap. And it's like, oh, he's not getting these five stars. It's like, well, he's getting a lot of guys into the NFL. And George is not going to get a ton of first rounders in the NFL, thousand yard receivers, but he's getting a lot of guys who when they came in, you would have never said, Oh, that guy's gonna be in the NFL. I think the stigma around Georgia and the wide receivers could potentially change this upcoming year. And that could be something we could talk about a little further in depth. Maybe on another show is you're going to have Carson Beck probably go for, man, I don't know, 4,000, 4,500, 45. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he could, he could potentially hit 45. Um, The, I think that could, that could change some things, but it has been for a long time. George has been running back. You, I mean, it, you talk to any of these high school kids, they're like, what's Georgia known for? Well, they're running backs. You know, Todd Gurley, the Nick Chubb, Sonny Michelle, they, they just rattle him off. You know, James Cook now that he's balling in the league. Um, it's gonna take it's gonna take a, a little bit for Georgia to switch it up. Well, let me ask you this, Paul. So let's say that we go out, uh, let's say it's Terrence Edwards or who, whoever the, the new wide receivers coach is. And if that coach tells Kirby, I do not want to rotate eight guys, I want to rotate, I want four guys in there starting, and then when they get tired, they can get a breather, but they come right back. Is that Kirby's call to say rotate all of them, or is that the wide receiver coach's call? I think that the wide receivers coach probably uh he's gonna be asked about that in the in the interview and whatever answer he has, uh, it better align with Kirby's, right? Yeah. So probably continue to rotate him would be my guess. Uh, because yes, yeah, it's, it's Kirby's call at the end of the day, you know, um who who's getting in and, and getting out. So um yeah. it'll be interesting though. I think it'll be wrapped up by the time we have our next show who the wide receivers coach will be, and we'll, we'll be able to d- deep dive into him and and what he's been able to do. And who knows? I mean, there's some good names, guys. We, we talked about James Coley, Joe Cox, uh, Terrence Edwards, Heinz Ward, Brandon Streeter. Five pretty solid names uh, that you could add to your coaching staff. So. Well, I, I don't, don't, don't want to – You're not talked about. So. Yeah, James makes a good point. I mean, I kind of crapped on it, but – it's Kirby smart. I mean, we got to trust the guy, right? I mean, he's going to make the right choice. He always does. It seems like, right, James? Yeah. And it's not like we're replacing a DC or OC. Yeah, so. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. It's not, it's not like a critical part of the team. Right. Yeah. And, it, but look, BMAC and you'll see this uh, over at ujsports.com. They just had the Under Armour uh, combine over in Carrollton and Roddy, Jed, Trent, ton of guys were over there. There's a ton of new recruiting info on the vault. You got to go check it out. Um, and they talked about BMAC to some of the top wide receiver uh, recruits. And they're like, yeah, that's that's big time, you know, him leaving. So whoever it is has to come in and, and you know, get, get on the horn, if you will, and, and start contacting these kids early. I'm sure that, you know, Kirby will help, but you got to be able to get back out there and do the same thing BMAC was doing, which – he, he BMAC has always had a solid rep throughout yeah. the yeah. throughout yeah. everything. So you've got to bring another guy that's as solid as him too. So James, James, before you go, who's your one impact player that's oh. different from everybody that we were named? Well, I was, I did pretty much men- mention everybody that you guys were, okay. um, but I'm going to go Sokovi. I just think maybe. Oh. Sokovi White, huh? I've heard, you know, they've been liking him early, but it's so early. But yeah. he, he can do a little bit stuff that some of the other guys can't do. Um, you know, London, I don't even know if he's better than Arian Smith still. Arian had a bad year. Um, Ooh. I really like Colby, but, you know, there's so many. So I'm trying to think of a guy who can maybe do a little bit different stuff that we haven't yeah. seen. Yeah. I like that. I'm very curious. This will be fun too to kind of revisit this. Maybe I'll have Andy yeah. write our write our picks down from well, this show, and uh, we'll revisit this. Uh, I don't know sometime in the summer and see how yeah. right or wrong we were on our our picks. So, well, Paul will be right, right? I mean, we know that he's the yeah. guy, right? Maybe I mean, just ask him. Yeah, just ask me, James. As always, man, thank you so much for joining us. Take thank care, you, James. Yeah. 
And last thing before I go, Austin Riley, MVP, 40 doubles, 40 home runs. Oh, I love it. I love okay. it. Ooh. The goon. Ooh, tough. I like that. Um, Garrett Key said, speaking of running backs, did y'all yes. see what Brian Herrian tweeted out? Really weird and crazy by him. Made a lot of UGA fans upset. Me too. Seemed out of character by him. Yeah. So I think it's – has it since been deleted, boys? He deleted it. Yeah, he deleted it. Yes. But there are, you know, unfortunately but, but for him – Guess what? Twitter lasts forever. Yeah, screenshots. So yep. he tweeted out uh, yesterday, wish I, would, wish I never went to UGA. Laugh out loud wholeheartedly. And then right underneath it said, I get to UGA. It's like they're trying their hardest to not play me, and they know what I do on the field. It's been political since I got to college, NFL, XFL. I don't see running backs better than me, all caps, ever. I see a lot with opportunities, though. Um, don't, I, I don't know. I don't get that. Um, no, like, really no reason to – and you know what? I, I don't understand. I don't understand that either. Because from a fan perspective, which is what Andy and I are, I love Brian Harrion because he was yeah, a, like you had a really like a workhorse. Now, now, granted, he was Chubb was there, Michelle was there, all these guys were there in front. But when he came in, he just worked his ass off and got. Yeah. I mean, I remember the North Carolina game. He he came in and scored. You remember that? That was Kirby's first oh, year, yeah. first game. Oh, yeah. And Harry and scored. I was like, who is this kid? That was an awesome run. And from that point forward, I was a Harry and fan. I thought he was great. But I mean, to just crap. Now, could have been a late night, drunk tweet, whatever, you know, and he deleted it since. But I just, it, it wasn't a good vibe. I didn't like that at all. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't understand it. Um, and hopefully, if like I was Brian's PR team, I would tell him, hey, you need to reach out to, the all things Georgia call in show on Sundays. Yeah. Yeah. You need to yeah. reach out to, you know, uh, some other podcast that do these shows. You need to go, you know, m make right of this. Um, because sitting, I would, because sitting there and saying, saying that and then not tweeting anything else out, it's just yeah. like, yeah, where did you weren't, nobody hated you when you were at Georgia. I know. Right? Yeah. Why, why does this come out? You've been out of, when was the last time he played at Georgia? You've been out for like four years. Yeah, it's yeah, been four or five years. years. Like, I don't get it, man. I don't get it. Just, just let it, let it be, Brian. And so, once again, Chubb and Michelle. I mean, those those are legendary running backs. DeAndre helping their cause, right? I mean, it wasn't. I, I, come on. I mean, what is he going to so start in front of Nick Chubb? I mean, what is that? What you wanted? That's not yeah, so happening. If you're, if you're watching. Uh, Brian, or if it's somebody sends this to you, open invitation to come on the show and we'll yeah. talk, we'll talk through it, brother. We'll talk through it. We'll see, we'll see why you sent it out and we'll walk through it piece by piece to see uh, what, what's going on with that. Guys, we've got seven minutes left. Football really took us uh, and yeah, I appreciate yeah. it because um, I love talking football, even when there's really nothing to talk about, because that's, that's when, uh, that's when you have the fun. What else is on the docket, Andy? Well, do we want to talk about UGA baseball? They swept the UNC Asheville Bulldogs this week. They took um, took all three games. That was huge. Um, they had 38 runs, 34 hits, eight. eight doubles, and 10 home runs. They hit 10 home runs in three games. And the crazy thing about those 10 home runs, Charlie Condon did not hit one of those. Yeah. So that's huge. And Charlie, so got Charlie, if you, it, I know it's baseball. It's early. But you want to tune in and watch a major league prospect playing that baseball. Guy. Charlie Condon is a badass. Tune in just to watch him play. That catch he made today should yeah. be number one on ESPN highlights. Yeah, it has to be. Incredible. And then uh, that Slate Alford kid, if you haven't oh, heard man. about him. He's great. Yeah. Transfer from Mississippi State, guys. Uh, starting off, uh, leading off. <laughs> I think got on base almost damn near every time he was he was playing. So he hit 429 this week, three homers, nine RBIs, and he scored five runs. So yeah. Hey, things might be turned around for old uh Georgia baseball. Good to see them at least starting off in a in a sweep, right? I think they haven't done that in a little bit. So hey, I have a question for you guys. So um we all know the score of the bowl game against FSU was 63 to 3, right? Yeah, um, damn. That seems like so long ago. I know. Yes, you're right. That, that's, that's, it happened, okay? And then today, or no, yesterday, the softball team beat FSU 20 to 10. So that's yeah. 83 to 13. <laughs> so is FSU now Georgia's bitch 
That's hey, my well, question to you guys. You also, you also would have to add on uh, Georgia basketball beating FSU. That's You'd have right. To add that Earlier well. in the year. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That, I even that gets it even that. higher up. FSU yeah. is Georgia's bitch, right? There you go. Straight from Eddie from Ackworth's mouth to uh, <laughs> to your ears, folks. There, there you go. UGA basketball, speaking of, guys, in this last five minutes of the show, um, man, they've taken a turn. They've taken a turn. And I don't know how to fix this, Andy. How do you fix this? Well, I, I, I will say this. Last year when they were in these games, they were getting completely destroyed. Yeah, at okay. least they are close in these games now. So I'm looking at it as, as like, okay, we have got to this next level, and now maybe next year we can move to another level because I don't know. It's 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 sad watching them. I mean, it just it's it's disheartening. But they're in all the games, and they weren't last year. So I'm I'm trying to take a positive. They're in the games now when they weren't, and hey, I think it's one step at a time. Maybe next year they can get a big guy that can be dominant down low, and then that will help everything. Garrett Key says, Leg- legit question for UGA B-Ball. Do they win a game the rest of the year? They have Vandy coming up. I'm mm-hmm. looking at the schedule. They lost to go- Arkansas on the road. They did. <clears throat> they've got to go to Vandy. Then they've got uh, Auburn at home Saturday. That's tough. LSU on the road. A&M's coming to town again on Saturday, uh, the, the Saturday after that. And you've got Old Miss and then Auburn again. Man. I, they need to right the ship against against Vandy. They've got to. Um, and, and you're throwing your hands up, Eddie. But let's let's not act like let's not act like. Um, <laughs> yeah, right here, perfect, James. Thank you. James says, "Remember when we were talking about NCAA tourney a couple shows yeah. ago? Good times." Yeah, yeah you're, you're throwing your hands up. Yeah, There's yeah. Win them, win them all, Paul. Right there, he's got them all. <laughs> Was that yeah, before the Florida loss, the first Florida loss? Was that before that? Yeah. It was. Yeah. That's what started it all. It did. They're just, they're, they're, just, they're just an immature team. They don't know how to win games yet. And that's that's what I'm chalking. Andy makes a great point. You know, last year we lose by we lose to Florida by 20 points. And we didn't yeah. do that, you know. Now, you, I did watch them lose to South Carolina by 10 points. South Carolina is a really good basketball team. But I, I don't know. It's just – it just seems to me it's the same old, same old. They teased us with a 10 win run, and then we go 0 and 5. What are we, 0 and 5, 0 and 6, whatever we are now? And it's just, it's been ugly. And it's just, I don't know. It's, it just seems to me like you rolled out all this goodwill and it's just gone now. Now, I'm not saying the ridiculousness of fire Mike White, move on. That's absurd to me. We we got to give it another couple. Nobody, of years. Nobody's nobody's on that train. Oh, no, I've seen it. I've seen that, Paul. Really? I'm going to move yeah. on from Mike White. You know? Oh yeah, yeah. Because everybody's still so impatient at this point. You know, it's like this is what we've been handed every year. It seems like, and it's time to move on. But I disagree with that 100. percent Mike White needs to stay. He needs to he, he at least three more years to see what we do with this guy. Three more years. Yes. So five. What? You want five years for him? I said three. Yes, I three more from now. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Well, I say next year is kind of that. That. Yeah, I was going to say maybe maybe next year. Maybe next yeah. year. If they if they go back Who down again, get? who's Georgia basketball going to bring in? They're going to be like, know. oh yeah, this is the guy. I mean, everybody what's Co- is. What's, hey, what's Coach K doing these days? <laughs> if we get Coach K in Athens, <laughs> like ninety five. <laughs> I'd still be awesome though. Could you imagine that, Coach K? I mean, in his wheelchair on the sideline, and then, oh, dude, that'd be great. What's he doing these days? You know, hey, why don't they? they, I know a guy who coached Dwayne Wade. Hmm. Let's get him back. Yeah, I know a guy who coached Dwayne Wade. He's out there. Relax, Mike. I got fine. I mean, come on. Just saying, there's there's coaches out there. Okay, so don't tempt me with a good time, Eddie. (laughs) Okay. Don't hey, get me with a good time. Before we go, can can I mention one thing right quick? Oh, um, no, you can't. We're done. No, this, no, this is big. This is big. This is legit good oh, stuff. Huge, yeah. Um, hang on. Let me find my link. Okay, Meek's not, Meek's not coming. That's so stupid. Oh, no, um, no. So the um, the my my boss Mike Compton at the Georgia Center. He is the vice president for the Touchdown Club of Athens. And in conjunction with the Classic City Collection, they put on the gala each year. So the gala will be April the 22nd, 2020. Well, hang on, that's April 22nd. Um, 
God, they got the dates wrong on their own website. It's not April 22nd. It's coming up in April, and it's going to be um, all the money that they collect, they, it goes to the Classic City Collection. And so you can buy a table of eight chairs for $10,000. So, Eddie, we're getting in your range. But all of the... <laughs> um, all of this this money goes to the Classic City Collection. And so if you buy a table, you get a football player at your table. So um, it's – Eddie disappeared because talking about $10,000. But <laughs> the, the gala is is very important. It will help with NIL, and that will be happening in April. What else uh, do I – Andy, what else do I get with that? Besides you get a, a, a football player to sit at your table, and you get a meal. So it's basically just donating money. So is what it is. But it is, um, yeah. So because I was going to ask you, I was going to ask you the price, and then you 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 told us the price. Wow! But if you bought one one chair without buying a table, it's seven hundred and fifty dollars. So you would get a meal, and you you know you get to take pictures. But yeah, straight up black tie event. It's um yeah, it's it's really yeah, it's really nice. But yeah, so the money goes to it goes to the Classic City Collection. So. And I will have the date, like I said, on their website, it says April 22nd, 2023. So that's clearly wrong. But, um, but yeah, so it's. Um, what type of, yeah. 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 Chris Taylor is asking who's ever been. There's somebody that's watching this right now that's been. I know you have. My tell ball, what, Mike, are you on here? If you're, tell, I don't see his tell name. Me, tell me what's, I mean, I've seen it. I've always wondered, right? Um, I've always wondered what, what goes on with that. Uh, so good to know that it's. It's affordable for some, you yeah. Know? Yeah, for Eddie if his internet works yeah. out here in yeah. Adler. Uh, yeah. With that being said, guys, we appreciate it so much, so so much, uh, and thank you for watching us this Sunday. We'll be back next Sunday to uh, talk about. I'm going to go ahead and put it on the record. Talk about Georgia's new wide receivers coach. Okay, and uh, probably some more Georgia basketball. Who knows? And the Braves for all the black tie. No, I don't, brother. I don't. I don't uh, own a black tie. I do not. Appreciate you guys. We'll see you uh, next Sunday. Thanks again.